In this lesson, I'm going to be covering the basics of color correcting, how to read waveform monitors, histograms, and vector scopes, and how to do that all inside of Final Cut Pro 10. So to do this, you need to open up a video file. So I have this video file here down on a timeline. It was shot in 4K on the Canon XC10. And you can see over here, I have some video scopes. Now to pull up the different video scopes, you have to click view and then show video scopes on the display area. And then once you're in this view, there's another view menu and you can choose how many things you have up at the same time. So let's say I want to have three things up at the same time, and then you can choose what it is that you're looking at for each of the different sections. So let's just make it a single view so I can talk through them one by one. And I'll go ahead and make this a little bigger. So first up here, you have the histogram. Histogram will be familiar if you know photography at all. So you have your different values from zero brightness to 100, and you can see the different colors there, red, green, and blue, and where they're falling. So you can see this red part's probably this rock here in the middle. The blue that's a little bit above 100 is probably most of the sky. Green is some of the grass and stuff. So that is the histogram. The vector scope is useful mainly to see skin tones. So skin tones will fall on this line if you have someone that's in the shot for most of the shot and then it's a plain background. You can really make color manipulations and keep skin tone on that line. And the further you go out, the more saturated the color is. So you have red, blue, green, yellow, magenta, and cyan. And so if I make an audio or a color change here by showing the color board, which is also command six, and I just go ahead and make everything more saturated. You can see it got further out towards the edge of the circle. My image looks awful. And if I drag it back down to no saturation, so black and white, you can see the vector scope doesn't show anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset that back to zero. And that is the vector scope. Next, you have the waveform monitor. And this one you view similar to the histogram, but instead of the entire image from zero to 100, you have zero at the bottom, 100 at the top, and then this is the left side of the screen, and this is the right side of the screen. So you see this bright area here? This is actually this rock that's a little brighter. You see this blue that goes throughout? The blue in this section is this right here. The blue that's a little darker at about 75 luma is this section here. And you can see that that's the sky throughout and so on and so forth. So you, it shows you the different colors and then their brightness or luma values from left to right, from zero to 100. So those are the main three scopes. You can also choose how you wanna look at it. So I like to use the waveform in an RGB parade. And this means you're looking at each color individually. So now you can see that sky piece a little bit better and you can tell that red piece is the rock over here. But this really helps with white balance or when your video is tinted towards red or towards green, and you can go into the color and, and make changes that way. So I like to use the RGB parade or RGB overlay, but typically the parade is how I'm going to use it. And so if I was to set this up for me, I would probably go with maybe three up like this. And this is probably how I would do it. Maybe I would have the histogram with the RGB overlays. And then down here, I would have the waveform with the RGB parade. And then I could see the overall image from zero to 100 this way. I could see the vector scope. But most of the time I'm going to be using the parade here. So now that you understand how to read all of these, the main three tools inside of Final Cut Pro 10 all fall over under color correction and on the color board. Now, by default, this doesn't show up in your clips. You have to actually go to down here and say show color board or hit command six. So once you get that to show up, you can always hop over to it and you have three different tabs. You have color. So that's changing one color into another color. So on the plus side towards the top, if I select this, which is global, these three are shadows, midtones, and highlights. If I go global and I go towards the plus side, it makes everything more green. 
can see it in the image. You can see it in the RGB parade. If I go to the negative side, it's removing green. So it's getting kind of purple because there's more red and blue and I'm removing green. So you can do little adjustments this way. So maybe I wanted to warm it up a little bit so I could take global adjustment, make it a little yellow, but maybe I wanted the shadows to be a little bit more blue to offset that, but it's still a little bit warmer, bluer shadows. And then you can always go back and toggle your changes on and off. So you can see it's more of a warm, orangey, Western kind of glow to it, but maybe that's not what I want. I can go ahead, click reset and start over. And you can also have multiple layers of these as well. So you can, you know, do keyframes and things like that to have it change during a shot as well. But multiple layers of color correction might be good if you want to first fix exposure. So let me get this red back in the shot. Let me bring back some of the sky. Maybe I'll go global, bring everything down so that's between, you know, closer to between zero and 100. I'll bring up the shadows just a little bit there. Let me bring up the midtones. Allows me to bring the shadows down. And so it sometimes doesn't look like you've done much once you've made changes, but you can always go back and do a little bit of a change. So basically what I did was brought in the sky back a little bit more and there's a little bit more contrast in the image too. Like I said, I didn't make a ton of changes here, but if I was going to then bring in some saturation, maybe I'll bump up the global a little bit there too, and then warm up, maybe just warm up the midtones a little bit here. Now, if I go back and look at all my changes, it's quite a bit different. This looks a little cold and plain. This is a little warmer, has a little bit more detail in this rock, especially if you're watching this, it looks blown out. Sky looks a little blown out, but brings back a little bit more detail in the sky and in this rock here. So those are the main tools you're gonna use. You're going to learn how these work and how these change, as well as doing color boards and bringing in different changes either globally or through the shadows, midtones, and highlights.